Okay, I'm going to call this video the tale of two 350s. What we have are two 1980s, mid-80s vintage Oldsmobile 350s. For you GM guys, you know the telltale. They're upside down, obviously, but the telltale oil filler tube in the front. And one is actually from a Cadillac Seville, which sharp eyes will spot the cover for the, oil, uh, the fuel pump on both of these. The other is a DX Diesel. These are cast into the block. You can see that's a regular 350 Oldsmobile. That's a 350 DX Diesel. I was told it's a good wrench. And uh, that came out very clean. That's for a stroker project. This uh, Garden Variety 350 is being put back into service after a camshaft and a bit of a freshening up of the gaskets. The reason I'm making this video is because Oldsmobile fans for years have heard talk of how much stronger the diesel block is. And if you want to do a gasoline conversion, um, first of all, is it possible? Um, I think you'll see the similarities here. Uh, uh, they, it really is possible. And, um, you know, how much, how much is there to this myth of more strength? Okay, so I don't have things exactly the same here. This one has the head still on it. Um, it has the uh, engine mounts. That one's been stripped a little more. <clears throat> uh, I'll start with a little quick teaser here, and that is the difference between the oil pans. Okay, you can see that the regular 350 out of a, it's about an 85 cutlass. Um, it has the the plain sump. Really, no depressions for the chassis. Uh, this is a I want to say a four and a half quart oil pan and um, a, a half a quart in the filter and there's, as you'll see in a moment, there's no baffling in it, there's no tricks it does the job, it holds the oil. The diesel pan has got a little more tech into it um, you can see this extra hump here that looks to me with the, with the depression uh, for the chassis uh, maybe they didn't know what chassis in particular Good wrench didn't know what this would go into, and so they made a more universal type pan. To me, it looks like, you know, just naked eye without filling them, that this one might hold a little more oil. Um, now, taking it off real quickly <coughs> and putting them side by side. You can see the difference, like I said, no baffling whatsoever uh, versus a slosh baffle which prevents the oil from climbing away from your pickup under hard braking. Um, as far as the construction, the metal feels about the same to me. So if I had a choice and I had a diesel available, I'd go with that one. Okay, now let's look at what we're really here for, the bottom ends. And hopefully you can see this, I got a light. Okay. This is not a non-nodular crankshaft, 350, with the 3 and 3 8 stroke of an Oldsmobile. Just had a new chain and camshaft. Two-bolt main. You can see the size of the uh, counterweights. And um, over here is the, the diesel. And a bit of a different story going on here. Um, the size seems to matter here in the application. Okay, I'll come back to it. Three things with the differences here that we're going to talk about beyond the oil pan. I can't really talk about the difference in the pistons because the heads are on this one. But just a quick look at what you get in the diesel. You get a flat top piston. And that comes right up to the deck. Short just a few thousandths with a fire slot and a couple of really shallow... Um, valve reliefs so that's gonna that that block without changing anything is going to get you a lot more compression okay on to other business first of all let's look at the take a look at the block all right rumor has already always had it that Oldsmobile starting in the 70s started to take a lot of weight out of its blocks and that this unit here completely assembled would weigh about what a small block Chevy weighs if not a little less uh, cast iron 
and uh, you can start to see why okay if you look at the bottom of the piston uh, bulkheads you can see there's been a lot of material taken out you see those depressions with the ribs all that is material that could have been there right and that is there is present in the diesel block right of course there's that's a water jacket you know so it's not necessarily solid solid metal but there's no ribs right okay now here's here's the big reveal that everybody kind of knows about the open secret and that is the windowed main webs okay watch carefully now let me turn my light over here to spotlight mode if I can if you look down below the center main cap here watch my fingers it's like a little magic trick see this now that's a hole that I could pass a golf ball through easily and not necessarily a tennis ball but probably close each one of these main webs has that hole that's called a window you see it there I can see right through to the other bore so that if you wanted to convert over to four bolt mains there's really nothing here there's no meat to bolt into so you can't do it now before we go throwing rocks at this block, I do want to say this, and playing kind of devil's advocate. In my experience, the factory engineers usually know what they're doing, right? This was obviously a weight-saving measure. This has a kind of sus suspension bridge, I suppose, um, designed to it. And the middle is still there. I don't know if you can see that. Okay, so there's a big support in the middle going up to the camshaft tunnel. And then there are the side supports. Now, those of you guys who know anything about the strength uh, of design, I mentioned suspension bridges, right? But take something average like a milk crate. I bet a lot of you guys have stood on milk crates um, to fix a, a truck over the fender, right? Gain a little height. And I, I don't know about you, but I would not hesitate to stand on one of those things, even though they weigh about a pound and a half and they're only made out of plastic. And it's because of that rib design that they work. Same thing with an egg. It's hard to crush an egg from the ends, even though it's as fragile as, you know, enough uh, almost paper. Um, if you push on it the wrong way, um, with the forces, taking the forces designed to take uh, under the chicken, <laughs> right, um, it'll last forever, or at least it'll last long enough to do the job. Probably the same here would be my opinion, okay? Now, would I build a 400 horse engine out of this? No. Um, probably I would stop myself, well, forget horsepower, I'd probably stop myself short in somewhere in the three, 320 horsepower range, just like the factory did um, in the early 70s. And if I wanted to go further than that, I think you're kind of rolling the dice. Um, why? Because we all know about flexure of parts. I mean, skyscrapers, they say at the top, are built to sway 6, 12 inches in the wind. If they didn't, they would crumble. Um, same thing with metal parts. Even though a crankshaft looks very rigid, uh, what I've read is that under high RPM, it can flex about a quarter inch from end to end. Not unlike a piece of spaghetti, although that's an extreme example. Um, rods flex... Obviously, things like timing chains flex, even the block flexes. And so, with the windowed main set up here, I'd hate to think about the parts flexure that's going on at high RPMs, and that's why I'd kind of hold off with one of these. Okay, this block, right, you can see the, uh, the main bulkheads are there. You know, you can't see through. Right? There's no windowed mains here. Yeah. Just a case of old school technology. Okay, now that does limit what you can do inside. If you want to put a big block crank in one of these, which is what I'm going to do, um, chances are I'm going to have to mill down the uh, the counterweight to the crankshaft to get it to, to turn in there because of the added material. But the strength certainly is there. Um, okay, on to the crankshaft. Um, 
The diesels, I, I didn't know, I didn't really look for an N on this crankshaft for nodular. It's a cast crankshaft, it's not forged. Um, you can see the casting lines. Let's see, I don't have it turned. I, yeah, there you go. You can see the casting lines clearly right there. Um, but if you look at the counterweight, so I don't have a caliper handy, but if you look at that counterweight and you look at this counterweight, you can see pretty clearly, I want to say with my eyeball, there's at least an eighth, if not a quarter of an inch extra material in that crankshaft for the diesel. And why? Right next is the connecting rods. Look look at this correct connecting rod right here. Okay. I don't know if you can see that, but that thing looks really beefy. In the old days, they wouldn't hesitate to use that in a race motor. Connecting rods in these, and they're not wimpy by any means, but they're about average. They don't look any stronger than a small block Chevy rod to me. I can tell with my eye how much thicker those are over there. Um, now, are the pistons forged? I'm guessing that they are. I'm not sure. Right? But I certainly would not hesitate to make a 500 horsepower engine out of this if I could figure out how to do it. The way that I know how to do it is to stroke it. You can also reputedly bore these out about an eighth of an inch, about 125 thousandths of an inch, and uh, not compromise the block, the integrity of the block. So um, all I'm doing here today, fellas, is not to debate that or whether it's worth it or whether you should just go on and build a 455. But for you guys who are into small block Oldsmobile, who like the weight savings, um, and are considering building up a 350, looks to me like it, yes, it is certainly worthwhile. If you don't mind the extra weight in your front end, it certainly is worthwhile to uh, go out and get yourself the, uh, the diesel. I, I've never had a, just a D block. This is just a DX, and it's my first one. So, um, yeah, go and get, go and get yourself one. Okay, thanks guys.